Fijian Prime Minister Frank Bainimarama has shot back at the Liberal MP for Benelong, John Alexander, after he said Australia's climate policy priority in the Pacific should be helping people move to higher ground. Uh, Frank Bainimarama has been speaking this morning at a, at a conference in Australia. Let's take a listen to what he's had to say. But I do feel entitled to give a return serve to a former tennis great turned politician who mentioned me by name at an election meeting a couple of days ago. It was in the context of my calls for Australia to stop burning coal, halt the development of new coal mines, <coughs> excuse me, and do more to embrace clean energy sources. None of that is new, but I guess, uh, but I guess it has particular resonance at the present time. The Honourable Member suggested, or appeared to suggest, that rather than heeding this advice, Australia should instead just help Fijians move to higher ground to escape the flooding from uh, sea level rises. I'll hit back the proverbial uh, tennis ball, of course, with this. In Fiji, we have already moved three communities and have a priority queue of about uh, some 40 others waiting to be relocated. The decision to relocate a Fijian community may seem like an easy one, but abandoning your home isn't some cold and calculated business decision. For those affected, it's a deeply emotional loss. An elderly Fijian widow now wakes up in the morning to find the ocean at a doorstep, slowly wearing away her home she and her family have known for generations. A young Fijian sugarcane farmer who learned how to toil the ground from his father and his father before him now watches helplessly as the fields that fuel his livelihood becomes too salty for crops to grow. And an entire coastal village moans as the graves of their ancestors are forever inundated and washed away robbing them of the deep and spiritual connection to their land. They have no choice. It is a matter of survival. But despite the enormous uh, difficulty of these decisions, Fiji is lucky we even have the higher ground to allow for relocation at all. I'm keen to hear what the honorable member believes the people of Kiribati should do in the face of rising seas where the highest point in their country sits at just 1.8 meters above sea level. There's been another suggestion floating around from one of your former prime ministers that Australia should offer citizenship to Pacific Islanders whose nations are disappearing beneath the seas in exchange for control of their seas and fisheries. In a time where we must be uh, future facing, we can hardly tolerate such insensitive neo-colonial prescriptions. I implore leaders of Australia to visit these communities and see, see them firsthand before they propose solutions that are so blatantly out of touch with the reality we Pacific Islanders live with on the ground, day in and day out. Let's not kid ourselves. Relocation is enormously complex. New resources and space must be allocated. New forms of livelihood must be identified and cultivated. That is why Fiji has developed the world's first relocation guidelines and is in the process of establishing a relocation trust fund dedicated to this purpose. Excuse me. Building greater resilience to climate impacts, including relocated vulnerable communities, is obviously a major priority. But if that's where we focus all our energy, we'll be faced with a climate catastrophe that no navigation, no story, no nation can navigate. OK, we'll leave that there for the moment. That was from Melbourne, uh, Fijian PM uh, Frank Bainimarama talking a short time ago about the very real impacts of climate change. So Fiji has already moved three communities uh, because of inundation or expected inundation and 40 other communities in a priority queue. Mr Bainimarama talking there about uh, what he described as insensitive neo-colonial solutions to climate change and urging Western countries to take urgent action uh, to stop the advance of climate change.